Hey all you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another TNI toy review. And today's review is in association with MarvelousNews.com, your number one news source for everything Marvel. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Marvel Legends 6 inch X-Men Bishop figure from Hasbro. Now this figure is part of the second wave of Deadpool themed figures, the Sauron Build-A-Figure wave. It comes packaged in the same style we see with all the Deadpool figures. You've got the black box up at the top, you've got the Marvel Legends series logo. At the very top you've got the X-Men symbol with the red border. You've got the figure clearly displayed and then you have the X-Men logo and the name of the character down below. On the sides of the packaging you've got some artwork for Bishop and then on the back of the packaging you've got a look at the actual figure, a brief bio in multiple languages, and then down below a look at all the figures in the wave that you need to get in order to complete the Sauron Build-A-Figure. Alright, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging along with the other contents. Now first of all, you get the arm and wing for the Sauron Build-A-Figure, the right arm. And I'll be taking a look at the Sauron figure in its own review once I've looked at all the figures in this wave. So be sure to check back for that. Okay, so for actual accessories for the figure itself, you just get this one weapon and it looks kind of like a futuristic sawed off shotgun, which is pretty true to what we saw Bishop use in the comics, at least in those early days. So this is done with just a dark gray plastic. You've got some sculpting detail with the ridges. You've got the slide mechanism like you would see with the shotgun here. It doesn't actually move or anything. And then you've got the multiple barrels on the front here. So again, this looks pretty accurate to what we saw Bishop use in the comics. And he can hold the weapon in the left or the right hand, and he does grip it nice and tight. And you can actually get the uh, trigger finger in the guard there. So he does hold it nice and tight. And then the figure also has a holster for, for the rifle that you can put on his back. And you can see here that mine actually has broken off. So I do wanna recommend caution when you're uh, handling the figure. Um, it's attached to this harness piece here and I was actually kind of moving it around to see if it was removable and I just kind of moved it and it just kind of tore out like that. So I can probably glue it back pretty easily, but just be wary that this, it's not, I don't think it's supposed to be removable. It looks like it was glued in there. And again, the glue just kind of came off. So it's just gonna fall off until I glue it back. But it basically attaches on the back and that's how it was in the comics. He would uh, store the shotgun on his back like that. So I like the fact that they included the holster and the holster itself is attached to this harness piece, which is a separate piece on the figure. He's also got this um, piece that goes around his uh, arm here, which I'll, I'll get back on here in a minute. Okay, so I've gone on, you can see here, I've gone on and glued the holster back to the harness piece so you can see how it's supposed to look. Again, use caution when handling it. Mine came out pretty easily. I believe it was just glued in there and when I was handling the harness piece the the, the holster itself just kind of uh, broke off fairly easy so just you know again use caution when you're handling it if it does uh, come out like on mine then you should be able to glue it back in place without too much of an issue but you just slide the gun in it and you want technically you want it the, the handle of the gun uh, facing towards the figure that's the proper way to display it and it fits better you can turn it this way if you want to uh, but it fits more loosely you can see it falls deeper down into the holster and it would just be kind of harder for him to actually grab it it, you know if if he was actually using it and such so um, the proper way to put the gun in is having the, the gun handle face towards the actual figure itself now for the actual figure I think Hasbro's done a pretty good job here the figure is very clean looking but I like the head sculpt now they've chosen to go with that kind of long jerry curl look for the character which is how he first appeared in the comics when Jim Lee was drawing him um, with the long hair and everything. He later on uh, went with more of a bald look and so I, I kind of like the bald look better but this is more of his classic look and I think they've done a good job with the hair sculpting. Um, it's more slicked back up here at the top and then just gets more kind of full here at the back. A very 80s look, uh, late not, or early 90s and late 80s look. And he's got the white out eyes and he's got the M around or over his right eye like you see in the comics. M for mutant, he's got the goatee and he's kind of gritting his teeth. So I think they've done a pretty good job with the head sculpt on this one. He's wearing the big red bandana, which is, is true to this look, this original look that he had. And then he's got the holster piece, which again is a separate piece. 
and then he's got the belt piece which is also a separate piece and he has the x symbol on his belt which is true to the comics he's got these pouches and everything so i think that looks pretty good he's got the pouches on the back again he's got the holster piece for his shotgun and he's got some pouches here on the back strap i think that looks good he's got this kind of v symbol on the right arm and then on this side he's got that mutant uh, x-men mutant symbol uh, that he had um, on the left arm which i think looks good and he's got these uh these uh, armbands that he's wearing and these are separate pieces like we've seen with other figures like the Jim Lee Cyclops and stuff so like with those other figures that had those you know these will have a tendency to kind of fall down I don't know why they don't uh, sculpt these or at least glue these on because they're kind of a pain when they're constantly falling down on the figure but you know overall when you have them up on the figure they look pretty good it's got the yellow stripe down the uh, side the left side and then the rest of the outfit is just blue and looks like that kind of classic x-men look which again is in keeping with the comics he's got the short sleeves and he's wearing the gloves those look good and then he's got the darker color boots which match the gloves as well not a whole lot of sculpting detail with his boots but overall, I would say they've done a pretty good job with the look of the character uh, capturing that classic yeah, look. I should note, the bandana is a separate piece, so you can actually remove it if you want to. You can just pop the head off and take it off. However, when you do remove it, it looks kind of funny because these yellow stripes that are painted don't go all the way over the shoulder. So they just kind of end here where the bandana is covering it. So that does look a little funny without the bandana. Now this figure stands just under 7 inches tall, so it is on the tall side. Bishop is a big character so it is a good size. Here's a comparison with the recent cable figure that Hasbro released, a fellow time traveler, and both of these figures are pretty close to the same height. Here's a comparison with the recent Tiger Stripe Wolverine, who is definitely shorter, and I think the scale between these two characters is really good. Okay, and then finally, here's a comparison with the older Toy Biz Bishop figure. Now, back in the day, Toy Biz actually did both versions of Bishop, the bald version and the long hair version. You can see here that I have the bald version. It was my preferred look for the character, so that's the one I ended up buying at the time. And I've got to say, while this new figure is actually a very solid looking figure, I think the old Toy Biz figure actually holds up quite well with, with the new one. And because you've got better paint applications on the older Toy Biz one and everything, I would actually, if, if I had to pick between the two, I would say that the old Toy Biz figure is actually the superior of the two. Again, that's not to say that the new Hasbro one isn't a nice figure. I just think that the Toy Biz really outdid themselves with this old classic Bishop figure. Okay, now for articulation on this figure, you can turn the head to the left and to the right, and he can look down really good. Really can't look back very much because of the long hair, though. He can also only pivot his head a little bit to the left and the right. The arms are tapped with your standard ball hinge joint there at the shoulder, so you can get his arm out good. Has good rotation there, has a bicep swivel, has a double hinged elbow, so good bending there. Has rotation with the hands. Now the hinges on these are up here and down here and they're actually covered by this glove piece which is a separate piece but you do get back and forth or up and down movement with the hands on this one and then he has an ab crunch joint so he can crunch forward pretty good you get that clicky noise and he can look back pretty good there at the ab crunch he has a waist swivel so you have rotation there with the legs he can do the splits about that much you can get the leg forward good and you can do the leg out and back has a thigh swivel, has a double jointed knee, so pretty good bending there at the knee. Then he has a boot cuff swivel and he has hinges on the feet, so up and down movement. And he does have ankle pivot and two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Okay, so that's my review. So overall, I would say this is a pretty solid figure. I like the overall look of it. I like the sculpting detail, especially the head sculpt. The paint applications are basic and clean. But, you know, for the most part, if you're a fan of Bishop, especially his original classic look, I think this is one you'll want to add to your collection. Now, when comparing it to the Toy Biz version, I do have to give it to Toy Biz. That figure was a top-notch figure back in the day and still holds up well compared to modern Marvel Legends with the sculpting and then the paint detail just kind of puts it over the top. So if I had to choose between the two, I would say go with the Toy Biz one. But this new figure, nevertheless, is pretty solid overall. Now, I would recommend caution when handling that holster piece. Mine broke off fairly easily. It was just glued on there. If yours does come off, you should be able to glue it back fairly easily. But again, I would recommend caution when handling the holster. Now, this figure, along with the rest of the wave, is available now. 
We'll have a full image gallery up at MarvelousNews.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel by hitting that button down below. I'd really appreciate it. You should also hit the bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. And of course, you can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I have links to all those in the video description as well. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.